Welcome to what's new in Server and Database in the 2025 release wave one. In this session, we're going to talk about four different topics, AL runtime, database stack, the web services stack, and reporting. So let's dive into it. The first enhancement we did in the AL runtime is a new way you can format numbers with .NET formats. So this only works in auto format expressions, not in the format function, but it allows you to do a format string such as this, or with an example here um, with a format string that returns uh, one way of, the, of formatting the number if the value is positive. Here you can see uh, 10.50 if the value is positive. If um, the value is negative, you get the value or presented with parentheses. And if the value is zero, you get simply a zero written. This was used if you want to see examples in, uh, in the enhancements of the financial reporting feature where a user can choose the way they want to have their negative form uh, numbers formatted. In the last release wave, we added support in client URLs to uh, specify a layout parameter in the URL, and this uh, then opens the page in different modes, such as analysis mode. And in this release wave, we follow up with the get URL AL function, so with two new overloads of that, so that you can use that to construct similar URLs that also use the layout parameter. For performance, we, uh, we have an, a feature where you can specify only to calculate vis visible flow fields on a page. We are a bit cautious, uh, so uh, we always um, think about whether this can have an impact. So for now, you need to enable this with a feature management key, uh, calculate only visible flow fields, and then you, can, uh, then you can get the benefits of this. Then later, we will make this the default value. There's also a new method on record ref, where you can uh, now call set auto calc fields, and this sets which flow fields should be updated automatically. If you ever need to take a copy of the current stack trace from uh, from AL, there's a new property session information dot call stack that will do this. Make sure that you only use this sparingly because it. It requires a lot of CPU to do this, so make sure that you don't uh, overdo it. The, in the past, the way the only way you could do this was to throw an exception and then call um, get last error call stack, I think it's called. But now you can just call session information dot call stack. Then finally, if you need to do any analysis in a telemetry on on Open Company, whatever happens there. Um, we now added two new custom dimensions, user type and guest user in telemetry events two and four, RT two and four. In the past, you would need to get these from the, the events RT one and three and then join. So that could be a very expensive KQL query to execute. In the database stack, we also did some improvements. The first one is faster copy company. This operation is now up to five times faster, especially if you have a lot of data. Now, you still need to be cautious with copy company. It can take a lot of locks, and uh, especially uh, you don't want people working in the company. So don't do it during working hours in a company that's being used. And also the operation takes a lot of resources on the server, on the, sorry, on the database. So, uh, so bear that in mind. These things still apply. If you use the database missing indexes page, we now have some extra goodies for you. Um, we have new fields that will help you answer questions such as how often would a proposed index be used or how would it uh, improve performance and then combine these two, how useful would a proposed index actually be. The database indexes page is basically an, 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 a wrapper on top of the uh, DM, DB, missing index details, DMV on SQL Server. And we added these new fields, seeks, scans, average, total cost, average impact, and estimated benefit. 
Uh, if you're interested in this topic, go and read the documentation for, from SQL Server on this DMV and then learn how to use these new properties with, uh, with what we already have to, uh, to help you um, if you need to do index tuning and add new keys, as it's called in AL. And the final thing for the database is for on-premises, if you use high availability setups, uh, such as uh, multi-subnet failover, um, you now have a new option in this uh, new server setting where you can set uh, the property enable SQL multi-subnet failover to true. And by doing this, the server will generate um, or add new properties to the connection strings when, we, when it, the server connects and discuss uh, data with, with SQL Server. Uh, by, by enabling this, your failover time can, uh, can drastically be improved. If you need to use this, uh, consult the SQL Server documentation on multi-subnet failover. So in the web services stack, we have two new features. The first is a hardening that uh, is coming from the Microsoft initiative, Secure Future Initiative, SFI. And uh, this is the largest security hardening project in the world. In Business Central, we, uh, we looked at outgoing calls from HTTP client. And if you call an endpoint and that endpoint have a server, server, server certificate, we now validate whether that certificate is valid. If not, we will actually not call the endpoint. In version 26, you can disable this hardening behavior so, so that in case you have endpoints that needs to be fixed, uh, you, can, you can disable a feature management with, a, with feature management in this, with this key, HTTP server certificate validation. And then um, you can, can get unblocked. But just note that in the next version, in October 2025, this validation will be enforced and uh, you can no longer disable this hardening in feature management. In case you need to know whether any um, outgoing calls are failing due to this hardening, there's a new telemetry event, RT52. You can see in which environment it happened, in which app, in which object, then some uh, information about which certificate it was and the failure reason for why this validation failed. So that allows you to troubleshoot things already now and then hopefully you will be ready when, the, when this validation is enforced in October. The second feature is um, if Microsoft um, starting to lock down the use of UI pages for web services, starting with, with SOAP endpoints. So in this uh, wave, um, we will block UI pages published by Microsoft as SOAP endpoints. If you need this feature, uh, we have a couple of hundred uh, tenants or customers who have this enabled. You can still go to feature management and, uh, and have this behavior disable web, so web services on UI pages. Its default is enabled, means that these endpoints uh, are blocked, but you can then um, you can disable that, disable, disable, um, and then you can get unblocked. Note that in a later release wave, this blocking will be enforced. This is how it looks uh, in the UI on the web services page. If uh, we have the feature switch on, you can see that the Microsoft owned pages are now no longer applicable or available as SOAP URLs, but you can also see that any other page uh, in, in this example, a pertinent per extension, uh, is still something you can expose as SOAP endpoint. Um, if you turn this off, which means you are back to the old behavior, you still get this notification that this will be removed, um, but you can still get to the SOAP URLs in case you need to be unblocked. In case you need to know whether any of these pages are actually being called, there is a new telemetry event, RT53, that gives you in which environment, in which object, which endpoint is being called, and also the deprecation message, which in this case is SOAP web, web service on UI page by Microsoft Publisher. So that will be the, the string here. And we can use this event for deprecating 
uh, more of these endpoints. In the reporting stack, we added the ability to do PDF post-processing in the context of running a report. So there's now a new on pre-rendering um, trigger, report trigger, that allows you to do uh, these three operations. You can append a list of PDF documents. Maybe you want to append terms and conditions document to an invoice. You can also attach a list of documents to be embedded in a PDF, meaning that they will be put inside the document. This is something we expect to use for the e-invoicing feature in the base application. And finally, you can set an admin and or user password for the PDF document, something we expect to use an uptake in the RIS 1099 report in the North America localization. And then we added a bunch of things for report developers. This will just be a quick overview. There's more details in the What's New in Reporting for Developers video. For word layouts, we added two new types of metadata in uh, the XML we embed in the word layout, report metadata and requ report re requests. If you open the XML here in the developer experience in Word, you now have this BC report information. And if you expand that, you can see the report metadata with information about report metadata, report name, and so on. And also the, the requests when the report was rendered, you can see which user, which company, when it was rendered, and so on. And now you can use these in your report. So you have no need to, to code the company name, username, and so on. In, in the actual report data set. You can just uh, get them from here. It's much easier for someone who looks at the, the layout. Uh, they, they just know it's always called company display name and it's located here. For Excel layouts, we added the, the ability to override the report default for the Excel multiple worksheet property. This allows you, you can both do this in AL and on user provided uploaded layouts. And this allows uh, for non-breaking changes. If, um, if you have a report where you already have, or maybe you don't know, but maybe some users added their own layouts and assume a certain value of Excel multiple worksheet, then you can't change that um, on the report level. That would be a breaking change. But with this, you can control it on the layouts that you control. And uh, therefore, you can, you can introduce new layouts in a non-breaking fashion. This is something we use in a lot of the new reports that come in manufacturing, uh, report layouts and, uh, and reports that come in manufacturing in version 26.1. We also made it possible to obsolete, obsolete a layout. You can do this, uh, this either in AL with the, with the normal tags or the, the normal properties, uh, obsolete tag, reason and uh, state. But you can also set this on uploaded uh, layouts. And then this is shown on the report layouts page. We did this because we have this initiative of adding, of actually modernizing a lot of the reports in the base application. And therefore, some of the older layouts will be obsoleted. And this is the way we, we want to do that. On the report layouts page, uh, we have new properties shown, deprecated or obsolete, last who, who modified or uh, uh, and when was this last modified, especially uh, this is uh, useful for the user provided uploaded layouts. And uh, the rest of the um, properties for a layout is something you can get or user can get using the get info action, a new action, uh, in case you need to troubleshoot something and you can ask the user to call this and, and copy the text so you know everything about the layout that they had an issue with. And finally, uh, we added the ability to uh, validate layouts with a new action on the report layouts page. This uh, will validate whether layouts are OK. And uh, we are also introducing font validation in version 26. It will just be for RDL layouts. In a later minor update, uh, we will also add this for Word and Excel meaning that in case a layout is using a font that is not available in Business Central Online or the, 
the, the place where this is hosted, this can now be validated. 